Hello, this video is uh, first in a series of two videos that's going to uh, talk about how to draw a paper bag. Um, the reason I chose a paper bag is because uh, it both has a kind of structural integrity to it, yet pretty interesting surface and form issues are going on as well. So we're going to be tackling that in uh, charcoal. So involved in this is uh, the idea of a two-point perspective, right? So we got to kind of use our uh, angle approximation to uh, uh, fully realize how the bag is representing itself. So the first thing we want to do is the long dimension of the bag, figure out what the angle is. Uh, here you can kind of see in the blue lines that uh, the top line represents a 45 degree angle. So it's a little larger than half of that 45 degree angle. So that's how I want you to kind of try to figure out angles. Uh, angle approximation is really important. So part of this uh, video is going to be looking at the bag and, and considering it in terms of uh, visual measurement and angle approximation. And the other part of the video is going to be um, uh, me uh, documenting or drawing it. So um, coming to terms with the angle is very difficult. Um, kind of making two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines, right? The way I want you to do draw this drawing to begin with um, is again not to uh, make a really crisp definitive outline but to block what they call block in the drawing with, with a graphite pencil and your straight edge. I want you to make every mark go with the straight edge. Now here I'm, um, I'm creating a, a vertical with the pencil and trying to figure out what the angle of the front of that bag is relative to the vertical. So you always kind of want to base things on verticality, horizontal uh, lines, and 45 degree angles. So I'm now I'm kind of paralleling that angle and trying to figure out the back of the uh, bag. What is the angle of the back of that bag? So I can kind of create a wedge or a piece of pie. You can kind of see that shape there. Um, there's a blue line indicating it. So there's a certain angle to that, right? So, you know, it, it, it's all about angles. Um, now notice that the back edge of that bag and the front edge of the bag, as they move back in space, are uh, converging, right, to some vanishing point way off of the picture. That's a, This is a two-point drawing. And how do we know it's a two-point drawing? Uh, by the fact that there's no plane facing us directly, right? The bag is tilted at a three-quarter view, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So uh, I'm going to constantly, and I do this when I draw, I constantly try to assess the angles. Um, so that angle where the, the top of the bag and the side of the bag are, are joined, it's just essentially a cube in space, right, with some interesting characteristics. So it's kind of, that's a little bit more severe angle because it's a wedge form. Now I'm going up and documenting the back of that bag as, as I described it earlier, right? See how those pinch in, right? That that angle and the one down in the front move back and uh, converge as they move back in space. Now we're shifting to visual measurement. So not only do we have to be concerned about angle approximation, but how long things are, proportion, right? So I'm finding about height of that bag is about equal to three of the width or the length. So here I am laying the pencil on the paper and I got to walk that down there and make sure it's three. So you can see how you're just creating a relationship of uh, height to length in this case, right? And applying that to the actual drawing. There's my measurement in space and there I am kind of counting it down. Here I'm uh, measuring the height of the whole thing on a vertical axis and seeing how many times that turned lengthwise fits and it's about two or so. Okay? So you got to look for relationships. Vertical counts two times down the length. Here I am back kind of just... It's a never-ending kind of process. There's those kind of little creases in the bag. Notice how they converge at the vanishing point too. Now, I didn't put that little kind of sag in the bag yet and none of that stuff, right? You you get you work towards that later. So there I'm measuring the height of the bag and see how many times that fits across the back edge, right? And it's about one and a half. And I document that on the drawing. Okay, again, again trying to figure out the, uh, 
the angles there. It's a, it's a constant kind of struggle to kind of figure out where to get that edge precisely. In fact, I don't want you to do that in this drawing. So the way I'm drawing it is really important. I'm leaving open areas. I'm just blocking in certain kind of uh, edges just to kind of give an indication of the structure of the drawing, well, of the bag on the drawing. So I'm documenting edges with two, three, four, five, six lines, right? In a very loose way, but using the straight edge, of course, because every mark you make uh, is bound by an angle, right? The whole drawing is about angle. That's how you get that sense of perspective. Right there, I'm kind of cutting in smaller little angles there, right, to get that little sense of a uh, fold there. You'll see that in a second. So I can do that. Um, you know, I don't have to do any of this freehand. In fact, I don't want you guys to do it freehand. So the way you lay the mark down is really important um, with this with this technique. You're kind of chopping away at the drawing uh, as though you had a chisel. There's that kind of triangular f uh, form, that fold. And see, I'm just kind of indicating that fold as it runs the length of the bag too, right? Notice I see way more, even though it runs half, if I were to look at that straight on the side of the bag, that fold would be halfway down the length of the bag. I'm not though, so I'm seeing much more of the of the bottom of that fold than, than I am the, 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 the plane that's receding that's going back in, right, the upper one. So i.e. the crease uh, is located up high in that space uh, between the uh, top of the bag and, and where the bag is on the uh, sits on the table. So just kind of getting a sense of the angularity of everything, right? This is structure. Structure is very, very important in a drawing. Um, when we move to the charcoal drawing, we'll um, talk uh, more about form issues, right? You're kind of making it, you know, engendering the, the drawing with a sense of texture and, and uh, you know, kind of vulnerability in terms of paper. Now here I'm measuring the height going vertically up, measuring the height of the, the side of the bag, and just stacking it upward. I'm getting about one and a half on the top, right? So there's my one. I go one and a little left over on top there, right? So I'm in good shape. Let me do it again here. So there's the one, and I go one again with a little left over. And that's what I got when I did the, uh, uh, you know, assessment in real life. So, so I'm just kind of, uh, you know, looking at the paper bag and uh, just kind of trying to create enough information in this drawing that could get me started on a charcoal version. So there's that little kind of curved area. I'm even drawing that with a straight edge, right? There's a language to a drawing. You know, if you kind of change the language of the drawing midstream, because it feels right or something, uh, then it disrupts the kind of uh, information flow. So, you, you know, when, you, when you're kind of mapping out a drawing, it's always good, I think, to uh, Number one, uh, draw your line in such a way that no no one line defines anything. And number two, uh, use that straight edge so you can get that sense of perspective. Now I talked a little bit about, uh, there I am kind of reassessing those folds a little bit, those um, folds as they move across. Again, I'm not showing the curvature of those as the bag sags. And again, um, you know, double checking my measurements. You, you always double check. but both a visual measurement and also angle approximation. So this bag is what it comes at us as what's called a three-quarter view, meaning it's not, if it was coming straight at us, we'd see the opening of the bag and then the bag, and the rest of the bag would go straight vertically on the, on the drawing, right? If it was a profile view, uh, we wouldn't see the opening and the, that bottom line would be straight across on the, on the drawing, right? And believe me, that's going to be your tendency when you look at the bag sitting on the table in front of you, is to uh, put that line straight across. There I am double checking the height measurement versus the width again, just to make sure I got everything right. So be very careful that you get the angle of that drawing, you know, that bottom edge, the leading edge, the, where the side of the bag meets the table at the proper angle to begin with. I see it all the time that students will will make that go straight across because it's the easiest thing, right? It's, it's what's in your head, you know, um, you, you, you're, you're kind of, you jump to the most, um, you know, the, the assumptions that are the easiest to process and a, and a 
subtle angle like that, which is like a 30 degree angle or something like that. It's a lot more difficult to process. So you gotta be very careful about this stuff. So notice I'm just kind of chopping away. I'm not um, overly concerned, no perforations, no wrinkles, none of that stuff yet. We'll, g we'll get to that stuff later uh, in the charcoal drawing. So those, you see, I'm kind of pointing out the kind of free nature of the blocking process with this uh, straight edge. I could show a little crink, you know, kind of indication of some little crinkle there just to play around a little bit. But notice the foreshortened opening there, right, where the bag opens up. And I'm not messing around too much, you know. I'm not, um, you know, I'm doing a kind of a, a, a height to width overall again. So kind of reassessing that whole thing. But that opening is very foreshortened, right? You can hardly see inside. So um, make sure that when you, uh, you could angle it the other way, your three quarter, you know, so the opening of the bag could be on the left side. But I do want you to um, position the object in a three quarter view. So essentially this bag is like a brick or a cement block or something, you know, it's very uh, cube-like, right? And uh, you got two sets of parallel lines, essentially, each set. Uh, or more than two, but um, the the left to right direction of the bag kind of has three major uh, lines that where the bag hits the table. That line that indicates the top plane from the side plane and the back uh, line that moves from uh, right to left and tilts upward. So those lines all converge at a vanishing point way off the paper uh, to the left side. Uh, and then we have essentially three major edges, the back left top. That one, you're going to struggle with that angle, believe me. Um, that's very low. You're going to want to make it at a 45 degree angle, right? Because the corner of that bag is going to play tricks on your brain, like the door we talked about with the doors and the walls, right? Uh, tilting the, the lines, you know, to confirm, um, so that it makes you, you make it look like it, and the door's at a 90 degree angle to the floor. Um, so I was talking about parallel lines. You got the back left edge, you got that front right edge where the little kind of curved um, cutout is, and then you got the edge down below uh, in the opening there that's on the table, right? So all those lines, in theory, go back to a vanishing point uh, on, on the right hand side way off the edge of the paper. So this is a two point scheme here, right? Now there's a little wobble in the bag, right? But you got to really understand that both, you know, that those parallel edges are are, are moving away from you to vanishing points, um, in you know, right and left respectively. I'm telling you right now that angle right there. There I am counting. I'm making a uh, visual measurement of the height of the bag versus the back edge. You tr try to be inventive with your um, visual measurement. You know, look for relationships that aren't obvious, right? That's a sign of somebody who's kind of investigating the world, right? Right? I'm kind of showing you ones here in this drawing, but, um, you know, kind of look for relationships. It's very important. And I'll tell you right now, the top surface of the bag, you're going to want to overemphasize. You're going to want to make it way wider than it actually is. That back, back left, that edge right there, you're going to want to make that a lot more vertical than it actually is, okay? That line is very low in its angle relative to a horizontal, okay? Not so much the front of the bag, but that back, like that edge there, that's a little more vertical. It's like a 45 degree angle, right? But that back edge is almost horizontal. It's way more towards the horizontal than it is the vertical, right? But I'm, going to, I'm telling you right now, when you do yours, you're going to want to make that almost uh, a 45 degree angle. Okay, or and almost vertical. I've seen that happen almost. Uh, these students almost make that vertical. And that's because there's a, a right angle right there on the back left corner of the, the upper corner of the bag, right? So they respond to that. But uh, you've got to be aware of the, all the angles here. So what we'll do is uh, gonna, um, transfer this, uh, and I'll talk about that later, to a clean sheet of paper and use charcoal pencil to uh, do the outline, a little cleaner outline. And then we'll start to apply, um, I'll, in the next video we'll, um, 
we'll walk through how to uh, use that soft charcoal to kind of create uh, texture and form and value and shadows and light and dark and all those other things that we haven't really talked about yet. So uh, right now we're just kind of dealing with the structural issues of this uh, uh, object here. And I think that's about it, and I'll, I'll talk to you later about how to transfer this. Thank you.